Today, I figure out who Andrew Tate is. I keep hearing about this guy over the last few months. A lot of young men seem to be talking about him. Uh, he keeps coming up uh, because I run a personal development following, so young men talk about him. I don't know much about him at all other than he got banned from all the social media platforms, which is not a good look, but I heard he made a lot of money. That's, that's about it. So let's see what this guy's about. I anticipate something controversial. And, you know, there's always a guy. Before him, it was Jordan Peterson. Before that, it was the guy who wrote Can't Hurt Me. Um, sometimes there's, there's just waves of hype. Is, is he hype or is he saying something substantial? Let's find out. Sparking disabled babes. I'm not a bad person, but I'm a quick person. Most people are slow and stupid. I'm fast. There's no hurt people in wheelchairs trying to use this space in those 45 seconds to do by this. So no, no one loses. Okay, so he's parking in a handicap lane. He's saying it's not a big deal because he's just going to be in and out. So no one loses. And um, I can see why this gets controversial. I, I feel like he's doing that on purpose to get views. Like the more controversial, the more views it gets. And I'm guessing he's not someone who cares about saying something wrong or people hating him. So I think that's a double-edged sword. It could get you a lot of fame, money, but like, you could just the be a bad person. I, uh, took one of these spaces. Uh, uh, excuse me, are you disabled? And I replied, uh, I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> And their face was like. <laughs> so now he's like joking about being a dick. Um, and it's a sign that he lies. You know, he, he's clearly willing to lie he's not the most ethical person but i mean let's just let's just continue let's see what else he has to say breathe air you don't need a vape have you ever seen anyone with a vape have you ever, have you ever sat in a room so we go wait oh let me just go my vape's done charging load it up i mean i smoke cigars but i know what the fuck i'm doing give me a big fat cigar I'm risking cancer to look like I'm... So let's just talk about how he talks. There's a lot you could learn here. He's very loud. He's very almost, not confrontational, but like, this is my point. Um, it reminds me of Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary does it in his own way. But that level of energy that it's almost like a oomph to you, it just gets people to keep watching your videos. Now, as far as the actual content goes, I mean, he's basically telling people, I guess, not to do drugs, although vaping is not really even a drug. So it's, I don't know, it's not the most inspirational, but I can see how that might be interesting to people. He has strong opinions on stuff. And that's, that's something Mr. Beast says, you know, he says, like, if you want views, you can't just be like, oh, I kind of like strawberries. You got to be like, Strawberries are the worst fruit on the planet or the best fruit on the planet. So once again, it, it draws a line on what's authentic versus what's ethical. Are you lying just to get views? We'll, we'll continue. This is only a second clip, guys. Let's continue. Fine. I'm not sitting there smoking cigars and going, I can't believe this is bad for me. No, like these fucking vape bullshit children. And what kind of parent lets their 16-year-old vape anyway? Why the 16-year-old son who's like, I'm going to vape fuck out of here vape do some push-ups you ain't got time to vape you gotta do push-ups you ain't got time not have sons who are too busy buying nfts and say oh i made a little bit of money and have skinny little arms and go to crypto conventions and be dorks i will not have nerds as children i refuse to have a nerd carry the lame tape if my son is a nerd one of us has to die him or me and i'll challenge him to mortal combat okay so once again the way he speaks, the words he, he says are just like they prompt uh, controversy. This time it's more his content. I mean, the way he's speaking too. But um, I believe he's, he's just not being truly serious here. Uh, I don't see this guy actually, you know, going to a one-on-one -on -one brawl to the death with his child. I don't think in the history of the last hundred years I've, I've even read that in the news it's not like in the last hundred years there's been a story in the newspaper man kills his son 
by challenging him to a one-on-one -on -one brawl over whether or not he's a nerd. It's just ridiculous. So he's saying this like he believes in it. Partially, he probably does. Like, oh yeah, I, I'm going to challenge my son. But it's, it's not literal. It's, it's said to get a reaction. Or, you know, because he delusionally believes it. But like when push comes to shove, he's, he, he, when push comes to shove, he's not going to do that. Especially in the U.S. That's not legal, I don't think. And uh, even elsewhere in all the hundreds of countries, I've never read in the news anyone doing that. Man challenges son to duel to death. Uh, so, like, clearly he got a reaction. The caption reads, Jesus Christ. So whoever the interviewer is was like, oh, my gosh. He's actually going to do it. Imagine one day you're sitting in Paris. You're sitting there having a fucking coffee. And terrorists roll through with AKs. And the person next to you has their brains blown out. You're going to stand there and be like... Waiting to die like a motherfucker. I'm going to be like, bang, oh, I've seen that before. Okay, boom, boom, duck and dive in. Take one terrorist out. Next, get the AK, go Rambo. I don't play games. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think some... I think some people who follow me are like, oh man, that's cool. Yeah, he's going to do it. My reaction is, I wonder if he needs to see a therapist or something. I, I don't know. It's, it's like, he's, it's a very unique personality. And I'm sure he gets it from somewhere, maybe his childhood. And uh, it's, it's somewhat of a teenage childish personality. I mean, I, I, I remember kids in high school after playing a lot of Mortal Kombat, or not Mortal Kombat, Call of Duty, they would talk like that. They're like, oh, I'm tough. I would do this. And maybe he would. Um, but, you know, after they outgrew that phase, like, they're not, you know, going out of their way to tell people how awesome they would be if some rare, you know, situation happened where you need a, you know, you need a assault rifle and you need to take out some some terrorists. It's just ridiculous. So I don't know. I wouldn't say that's anything worth getting taken off a social media platform for. But um, I think once again, it's the way he speaks plus his content. If you didn't have either, I don't think it would really get as many views as however many views he got. I, I heard he made millions off his uh, online courses before he got banned. My flight's delayed, but it's no big deal. Thank you very much. Like Thank you. Do you have salt? Yes, of course I have. Perfect. But when my flight's delayed, it's not like when your flight's delayed. I'm not with a bunch of peasants in a peasant holding area with a tiny Starbucks somewhere in the corner. No. When my flight's delayed, we just have our meal early. KFC. Eat fried chicken. What else am I going to eat? Obviously. Obviously. This is what powered me to world championships. Nothing's going to change. Thank you very, very much. Do you have sparkling water? For your safety, I feel like he's the guy to say this in jest and then you would catch him in another video saying like you shouldn't eat junk food I'm a winner I would never eat junk food that's why I'm like Michael Jordan I am a hundred percent optimized in every area of my life and that's why I'm not a loser like you and he'll say that stuff and then you'll catch him in a video eating KFC kind of showing off his life I wouldn't be surprised if he does that kind of guy I mean that's definitely like a flex type of video let's let's keep watching Strongly suggest you do the same. Get all your friends around, call every friend you have right now. Invite them out for a party. They all turn up, pour out sparkling water. Say, everyone, let's have a glass of water together. Water can't hurt anybody. We're all probably dehydrated anyway. What's the worst water can do? Let's have a nice glass of water and everyone's gonna drink it. You see that one dude? Oh, there's bubbles. Never speak to him again. I like the color. You like the color? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think. The way he manifests and talks, it's it's a somewhat extremist style. Like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna talk to this guy again because I invited him to a, a water sparkling water thing. I mean, he's regardless of whether he's joking or not. It's like, man, I think that's level of extremist kind of statement. Like, oh, I'm never never gonna talk to you again. It's like. It's a certain male archetype, and I think it probably comes from childhood. Like something, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a licensed therapist, so let's let's not even dig into there. Let's see let's see what else he's got. Yeah, I had uh, mixed reviews on the color. Some people said they like it. Some people said they don't like it. And I said, well, what color is your baguette? <laughs> oh, fuck off then. I come home. 
I mean, that one I actually agree with. Like, you know, if you can afford a Bugatti, then you shouldn't care what other people's opinions are, especially if, you know, they're just some random person off the street telling you your car's color sucks. My four wives are single. They've seen on the news there's new deadly contagion. Andrew, you need to wear a new deadly contagion. I pick up my sword. I am the commander of this house. I decide if there's a contagion. I decide what I do. Be quiet. Cook. Shh. I don't know if I'm a okay. So the sword part, totally get. Very classic social media setup type of deal. Boom. I pick up my sword. You weren't expecting the sword, and now you get this, like, oh, he's not just a regular guy. He's a man with the sword in the house. Um, that grandiose nature will get your attention a bit. As far as the actual content, like, you can't really just will a virus out of you. I mean, a lot of anti-vaxxers who didn't believe in it, you know, ended up suffering and catching COVID. So, you know, there, there's the scientific aspect of it, but I can totally see, and, and I mean, there's definitely something to be learned from someone who's able to, on some level, generate a lot of views and make a lot of money. Now, is it a good long-term strategy the way he does it? I don't know. He's been banned off all social media platforms within months. Let's continue. I'm allowed to say this on air. I had a girlfriend who was a vegan. I didn't know she was a vegan. Unfortunately, I found out. She said, oh, I'll never cook meat for you. I said, look, well, I'll be honest with you. Right now, we're going to end up splitting up because you're living in my house and I'm paying the bills. If I want steak, you're cooking it. That was a good two-hour argument until she eventually cooked the steak. Of course she did. What's she going to do? Lose me? She cooked the steak. She sat there. She pretended she was upset. Two weeks later, she's eating meat. I converted her. I fixed her. One person at a time, I'm going to fix the world. This is the reality. Okay, so the, the part at the end where she got converted to meat, that was funny. Uh, and, you know, I, I think I partially believe him. Like, it, it seems like a real story. So he's able to tell these stories. Storytelling is an art in, in very concise ways, engaging ways, uh, sometimes with a real twist at the end. Clearly, he has a lot of confidence in, like, I don't give a crap. I'm awesome. I'm rich. I'm successful. You do it my way or you, you hit the highway. So clearly, that type of energy, I assume, a lot of young men gravitate towards because they don't see it elsewhere. They just think it's awesome. As far as, you know, where I'm going to rail on this guy, I mean, not even rail at him. I just want to kind of like, you know, add more uh, of, of reality to the full situation here is, um, yeah, I mean, in every relationship, you got to set boundaries. So if your values aren't in line, uh, especially big ones like meat eater or religion, then you have to set those or at some point they will be set for you and then you're going to end up arguing or breaking up. I mean, is he really that amazing at everything if he still spent two hours arguing with someone? That's still a sign of, uh, you know, a long argument, a lot of wasted time. Um, but uh, regardless, let's continue. If you're some fat dude and you just had a heart attack and I don't really know you, Gonna die. I mean, if you're a really good friend, no, not even if you're a friend. You better, if you're my friend, you just can't be a pussy. Well, I had a heart attack. Get the fuck up. What's wrong with you? Go to hospital later. Have a drink, a cigarette, a cup of coffee. Back in the game. I'm gonna have a heart attack from me, you pussy. None of my friends would even have those kind of problems because I don't roll with fucking little bitches. But if you're some dude I don't know and you need CPR, and everyone's looking at me, who knows CPR? You want me? Help him. No. Why? Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, I really think he's being serious here. Some people will say he's trolling or joking. I really think in that clip, he really believed in those statements. Um, and so I can see why there's controversy because of his beliefs and opinions. He's basically saying he's not going to save another human life because he doesn't want to appear to be gay. And of course, that's very controversial because people were like, you would stoop that low for that small thing. You wouldn't save another person and touch lips with another person. I mean, that just, you're a horrible person or whatnot. Um, now, you know, what is clear is he's not afraid of expressing it. I think there's probably people out there who have similar thoughts, but they are ashamed or 
don't want to be outed or canceled online, so they will not express that. And then he's also doing it in an intelligent way. He's he's putting it out there confidently, gaining an audience in the form of entertainment or people who like don't have that tough love, confident person in their lives, so they gravitate to him. Um, I think um, there's definitely this energy of tough love sometimes. I think the content could be even better suited if he had framed it rather as, uh, yeah, I'm just not going to kiss this gay person because I'm not gay to, hey, like, you're fat. You're going to die. You got to work out. I'm not going to be nice to you and tell you that you shouldn't because you just got a heart attack and I'm nice. Um I think that would have been more inspirational and helpful than this this way he went about it. Um, but that's a different opinion, and that's kind of how I would have gone about it. And that's based off different values and ideas in my own head. But um, in that vein, I think there's a lot of potential benefit to that tough love because I think we all know some fat guy who got a heart attack, and then all the social media comments were like, Oh, it's such a poor tragedy. We're so glad he's helpful. And then this trend continues. He, he, he has another heart attack in two years. And, no, and it's partially because no one's really telling this guy, hey, you did this to yourself. But we're all just trying to be nice and, and not offend you. So we're not going to say that. And we're just going to say it's such a blessing and assume this is a, a tragedy that was out of your control. Um, I think that type of tough love would be very beneficial. I hate happiness. I hate happy children. Anyway, you're all losers. We've, we've discussed this before. I'm the king of the world. There's no power in sushi. Yeah, so that one was a little bit of a rant. So I, I get the idea, though. You know, he's telling you you're the loser to kind of inspire you. Let's continue. The whole point of food. And then the happy kids thing. That's that's funny. But he's also, like, really believing it. So he's, like, semi-self-aware that it's, like, controversial against the norms and a joke but the weird part is like I think he actually believes this crazy stuff food and water or food and liquids are the only things you put in your body unless you're a fucking freak and you're sticking things places they shouldn't go a hundred people at random who last had sushi for dinner and a hundred people at random who last had t-bone steaks for dinner and you got these 200 people 100 on each side and they had a fight in the middle to the death who the fuck you think is going to win a whole bunch of hippie liberal California losers and their sushi or a whole bunch of cowboys and heroes with their big ass steaks. Okay, so the scientist in me is saying like you're just you're literally putting all these assumptions to potentially two control groups uh, that in a, a controlled experiment would have all other things being equal. So you're kind of assuming and stereotyping all these people. Whereas in reality, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that there's plenty of very athletic people who eat steak and sushi or just steak and then just sushi. And then some of them are liberal. Some of them are conservative. I've met like most people like steak. Most people like sushi. But, you know, I guess he's he's kind of just formed these extreme groups and extrapolated. Uh, so I wouldn't say that's the smartest most you know aware topic and I, I it's not about being woke or inclusive it's just like that's a very you know extreme thing to imply that like oh yeah people who eat steak must all or mostly be all these political traits and dress this way and so forth I actually eat both I love steak and sushi so wh where does that put me and yeah. The fuck is wrong with you? What what kind of full grown adult? I, I don't really get the argument either. Like, is it vegetarian versus meat would make more sense? But are, are you saying a fish eater, a pescatarian versus a steak eater? Oh, deliberately, not on accident. Deliberately eat sushi. You go on a date with a chick. I'm also analyzing all the social media stuff now. He's he's framed well. The lighting's a little harsh, but you know, studio light. Then the captions, it's three lines. Usually it's just one line. And I do this too with my shorts, but he's doing three lines. 
no graphics either. So he's really relying a lot, mostly on his, his actual communication presence. There's a little bit of graphics, but not much, you know, carrying the weight of this going hey, viral. Blow up the sushi, please. Get the little chopsticks out. Dipping it in the sauce. Fuck is wrong? So he's, he's, somehow he had some experience or two that ascribes sushi eaters to, in his eyes, like weak, vegan vegetarians which uh it's just not true like I, i've had experiences with like very strong successful entrepreneurs eating sushi and sushi to me was always this premium expensive thing so like even you know when i was in miami i you know there's there's these very fancy restaurants that serve sushi and it's expensive so i ascribe it more to not a political class but a level of wealth little grown man he looked normal looked like a normal dude and we're going through the menu and he sits there and he says hmm, i think i'll try the sushi what what kind of full-grown adult deliberately not on accident deliberately eats sushi you go on a date with a chick oh the sushi please get the little chopsticks out dipping it in the sauce what the fuck is wrong with you yeah i think like i said same thing if he were to go to like a legit sushi restaurant where like each roll costs like 20 to 50 bucks i mean that adds up quickly you'd be singing a different tune it's it's basically your perception and your sometimes limited experiences on how you first perceive or see food no pun intended um yeah and that describes your beliefs about money isn't real but i am getting fucked is much better than having billions when you're 17. What the fuck are you gonna do with money when you're old? Your dick doesn't work. You're tired. You don't wanna go places. You're decrepit, you're slow. There's nothing left to do at that age. Notice the energy, you know, he's he's almost yelling at the, the mic, uh, slightly angry. And that, that really evokes you. And now notice the line, the captions are, are one line this time in the middle of the screen. And as far as the, uh, you know, the content, it makes sense to me. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people say save for your retirement, but there's that opportunity cost trade off. Like, yeah, you have a lot more when you're old, but like, what are you going to do when you're old? That's one part personal finance people don't really address much. So, so interesting topics. A lot of people ask me, well, Andrew, why do you have a machete next to you? And my answer is simple. Why wouldn't I have a machete next to you? Why don't you have a machete next to you? Like, what if someone gets in the house, gets fresh? So, yeah, someone knocks on my door in the middle of the night. I have to go answer the door, just instantly pick up my machete. Yeah, that's a very, very guy thing to do. So, um, I don't know. This one doesn't strike me as something that would go that viral. I mean, for years before, I mean, I used to follow um, some people who like had gun collections in their houses, and um, I actually followed them more so for their like entertainment videos, like their their uh, comedy sketches. But yeah, uh, I mean, that's nothing new. Yeah, but that's weird. It's really not weird. I think ahead, motherfucker. I have no shape. Sky John, who is now uh, called Tipsy Bartender, he has like millions of views on uh, his alcoholic channel. Uh, yeah, he has he has a machete. He owns a few. I think he hurt his hurt his arm once playing with it. But uh, yeah, not really a big deal to me. Um, it's a very guy thing to to purchase stuff like that. In fact, there's some, there's at least one depending on the room, between one and three machetes hidden in every single room in my house, even bathrooms. Any room I'm in in my house, I can, I can produce a weapon. And if you can't do the same thing, you need to think long and hard about why you're such a little pussy. Honestly, I think it is good for self-defense and security. Um, so that's it, that's the uh, content. Uh, now my thoughts just based off this is, first off, I might need to do part two just to give him the full benefit of the doubt and get a comprehensive view on things. This was a rather short compilation. Um, 
that being said, uh, it's one of those things where I'm still baffled. I don't fully understand why the actual content of what he says is really up leveling people's lives that much. Now, emotionally, they're probably getting a lot out of this. The, the confidence, the controversy, the, the, the entertainment out of the way he talks, the energy he puts into the words. He's almost arguing, yelling at the camera, telling you things, and that keeps the retention rates up and the algorithm going. And that is how you keep the views coming in. But that being said, with all of that, when you look at the actual content, sometimes he's more on the mark than others. But like after watching a hundred hours of this guy, what's what's the end result? How is your life gonna be better? Maybe some people will stop vaping a little, maybe that'll help us slightly with health. Maybe they'll quit eating sushi. Okay, that's a net neutral in terms of your health and performance. Um, maybe there'll be more, I think, I was gonna say misogynistic, but I, I haven't seen anything that's like truly misogynistic. It's just somewhat, um, you know, guy oriented. I, I say misogynistic simply because I heard he, he did uh, get canceled or kicked off for misogynistic comments. So. Um, yeah, I would say to be investigated more, but in terms of initial impressions, I think I gave it a full whack. I mean, this is a long video and, um, yeah, I think there's stuff to be learned here. Obviously take the stuff worth it, ignore and don't take the stuff that you don't agree with certain things around values that I have and ethics I have around parking in handicap zones, lying to people, jumping to stereotypical conclusions. Um, that's just not me, so I'm not going to take that, but I am always studying how this guy is successful. I mean, he's generating millions of views, whereas I'm generating double digit views triple digit if I'm really lucky. So there's a lot to be learned there, but is there? Because he wasn't on social media long. So nonetheless, there's there's been a lot of talk by young men about him. So uh, we have to kind of see how I can learn from it to help serve other people, up-level my life and my reach. That's it for this video. And let me know, I, I'm really thinking about doing a second uh, compilation reaction. So if you want that, uh, let me know.